hey everyone welcome back to my channel deep code vision today we will be talking about data types so let's get started now i have a python file open i have saved it as data types.py i am using my atom browser so the first data type we will be looking at is uh, numeric types now data types can be uh, divided broadly divided into two types one is the built-in data types which are present uh, with the python language and the other one is the user defined data types now for this video and the next video we will be talking about the built-in data types um, so for this video we will be talking about uh, the numeric data types and one of the sequence data types called the string data type uh, so uh, numeric data types are the numbers as the name suggests they represent numbers now there are num quite a few type of numeric data types let me start coding now the first type of uh, dat numeric data types are integer data types now integer data types can take in values which are whole numbers which do not have any decimal points or fractions so it can be from 10 uh, it can be let's say second um, a minus 10 or anything but it shouldn't be having any shouldn't be having any uh, decimal point or fra fraction now what is the range of data type act, uh, or rather the what is the range of integer data types it depends upon the it primarily depends upon the machine or the natural word size of a machine or the or to be very uh, broad it's the memory of the machine however you can have a number uh, a specific number actually uh, which is 2 I, I believe it's 2 to the power 32 uh, so that's the whole number now, now that is from negative to the positive it divided and the middle should be 0 so exact number it's it's a very big number but it uh, in general it holds a lot of numbers uh, and even if it crosses the range then it is considered as long end but we rarely see that uh, in in our day to day programming so the next type of data type is a float so this is our integer data types and next one is our float data type uh, float uh, represent floating point numbers or numbers which has a decimal point so num float equal let's say that that's a floating point number uh, now i am um naming my my variables as so that you can it's easier for anyone to understand you can name it anything x y z anything you uh, but just for clarity i'm doing this um to dot flow now another interesting thing which is a float data type is uh, scientific notations if you are familiar with scientific notations you might know uh, that scientific notations are uh, let me see uh, 55.67 let's take a number and save it as e to the power minus so that's how we represent scientific notations in python it means so it means 55.67 10 power of that's what it means so these uh, let me save this
you can also uh, write uh, negative uh, sorry the small letter e that's same um also what it does is it helps us to uh, reduce memory allocations now what it what i mean by that is this whole part or if we would have written the actual which is uh, 10 to the minus 4 so 0 0.0 Five, five, six, seven. This would have taken a larger uh, memory space. Now, how do we know what data types are allocated? Now, for other programming language, you would have um, defined something. If you are familiar with C, C plus plus, you would have defined int, int first num, and then you would have defined first num as a integer value and it wouldn't have taken any other value unless you change the, the data type now in python it's a little bit different uh, it it determines the data type depending upon the um, right hand sides of the e assignment operator uh, now what it what i mean by that is because we have written 10 as our literal numeric literal and so if you don't know what literals are there is a video you can check it out now if you if you uh, had written 0.5 it would have so that's a floating point okay so that means this variable is now of floating or float data type let me show you how we know what data types what is the data type of a particular variable call the type method and first num let's see if I run this code so it, it shows that it is of int so I have told multiple times uh, during during all these videos that most of the python are const like any uh, it's a object oriented programming so most of them are considered object or classes so it's it's a class int uh, we will not get into classes and objects a little bit later actually not now uh, but for now we are concerned about let's say this is a int now similarly we can also write print type of num to float it says the class is float so that's how you know what data type is now it becomes now now um, in this particular codes we we are using literals like floating literals and uh, integer literals so it doesn't make sense to because we are assigning a floating point number to that variable now it becomes interesting when we are extracting data or we are uh, doing some sort of data science uh, data extraction data science projects or even machine learning projects then it, it becomes easier for us to uh, operate on certain data if we know what kind of what type of data we are dealing with whether it's a floating point whether it's a um, integer or whether it's something else um, now the other type of data type is complex so complex data type now this is this you might might not find it uh, like extensively used uh, floating point and integers are most definitely used a lot uh, complex data types you will come across if you are doing any engineering projects or mathematics uh, if you are trying to Solve mathematics equations which deals with complex numbers 
so basically uh, it's the same as we define complex numbers in mathematics so we define num complex a uh, we the syntax is a plus b j and j means the square root of minus 1 or what we call it in mathematics as iota or i so that's how you define it um, it can take okay so it can be 3 so let's say 30, 30 plus 67 okay um, make sure it's either j or small j that doesn't matter but it should be without any space now it can also have can also have minus and points uh, or floating points in both of them that's perfectly fine takes in both so if i let's say what uh, type i want to know the type so num num2 complex now if i it says the class is complex so these are the most uh, common data types although we really use uh, complex data types in daily uses but if you are doing any engineering projects again uh, we deal with complex numbers a lot especially uh, if you are from a electrical engineering background um, you might have dealt with complex numbers a lot so if you are solving any equations of that kind and sure you need need to define complex number and now another uh, we can also re represent actually uh, binary and octal numbers it's the same as new uh, literals actually defining numbers so i'll just go through it quickly one example so it's 0 x f f that's that's hexadecimal numbers and but if i type this let's see what comes up okay so will it show hexadecimal or will it? so it shows int okay why you can represent a hexadecimal number but if you print that number let's say i want to print it shows my me the integer value so that's 255 um, so that's how python stores uh, even uh, binary values or hexadecimal or octal values so it's it's the same thing so if i change it uh, if i say num fine so that's you define it as let's say i'm not i want to print this So that gives me the integer value now if i specifically want to uh, show or print out print out the uh, binary digits so i would be able to do that only if i call the binary method on the so that outputs the binary uh, actual binary digit that we have used and that's how um, you can convert um, between data types so that's that's the segue how to convert into explicitly tell python that i want it to be of this data type initially uh, for other codes we would have again written int and then uh, int a right so i 
specifically tell the other programming languages that it's it's uh, integer now you can do that here also but you need to call methods so everything in here is either objects class and you have methods and all those inside the classes so uh, let's say I have a floating point so again num put one let's say it's uh, four seven point now if I print this uh, it should be it should be uh, outputting the same thing that is 167.89 now I don't want it I want the integer part itself but let's say it this is again this is we are using literals to define uh, the data types now let's say you have a loop and that's the equation equ uh, equation that gives this value but we are not interested in the floating points or the decimal anything after the decimal points now what we can do is we can explicitly tell python that i want that but i want the integer value of that and what it does is it uh, uses uh, uh, the int part and prints out that now there are un different methods to call now if you are familiar with how in mathematics we round off it should be 168 right now we can do that but we need other uh, methods to do that actually so that there, there is a method called floor which uses the floor so that would would be uh, giving the uh, 167 right now if i use this let's see uh, let's see if it works so okay that's that's i think it's it's in numpy so you can use floor anyways so for now let's stick to um you can also do one thing uh, another thing that you can do is you can change an integer into a float or but it it actually it makes sense sometimes when you are uh, using let's say uh, something from your um, again it comes down to like i can think of is data science so data science there are there are what to say um algorithms or even in deep learning there are neural networks that takes in only floating points so even if you have an integer let's say uh, you have a image which has a pixel value of one so it doesn't make sense for us to write 1.0 but for that neural network it only works with floating points so ne that neural network framework so then uh, you might be needing to change uh, our integer into a float now it's same it's the same you, you can do it num let's say it's 167 and I write print float now you can store that float in so you can also write let's do num2 I'm just uh, really uh, using the variables to make us understand so I am really uh, emphasizing on the variable names so that you can understand what we are trying to achieve but you can just name it anything actually so we don't need we just print out some float. So that's it it shows us a floating point number now if I call the type on it so 
for that um i call the type of which says float um you can also um change change string to int actually and you can specify uh, like you can let's say i'll go into string uh, strings just after this let's say i have a number which is in a string it can happen um, now i want to convert it um i can write int str to let's and you can write int str and let's say uh, print it so now it becomes a this becomes a integer but here it will be a string 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 that uh, you can change it um you can also change uh, like a string of binary or string of a uh, hexadecimal into uh, into actual uh, hexadecimal or binary now for that uh, what we need we need to pass in another argument actually here so how do we do that uh, we let's say i have a let's say pass on that's that's the we know this means five right now if i i'm just gonna print it i'm not gonna store it anywhere let's say i want to. now if i do this it shows a error because what error it shows it's invalid literal for int with base of 10 so by default this int method takes in another um, another argument which is a base of 10 now you can specify the base uh, this comes from the fact that remember just few few minutes ago we when we were checking what type uh, a number in hexadecimal or a number in binary was it was showing showing us the class as int but it it is a different class like it is int but it is a spe so it's a special type of int or a base different base int so for normal uh, int base it's 10 which is our natural numbers that uh, 1 2 3 and 4 now if we want to convert it in octal hexadecimal or binary we need to specify their bases now for that this we know it's a hexadecimal so i have a base of 16 now it works so you might not know what an r uh, what are the like expected arguments of a method 
you can call a help function on those methods like if i call a help on int it it going to be a long output but it so you can see that it takes in a object uh, and and then it converts what is the base so it takes in uh, base uh, so this part you need to specify if you want to a different base so by default it takes a base of 10 now for octal you can so let's say want a string oct to be uh, 0 7 now if i call in this in here with a base of 8 it should convert it into should convert it into an integer but it's in octal because this uh, uh, because our this is in octal but we convert it into a integer now if i want to see the octal i call method on on so you can call let's see so it shows us the octal number so that's how you can explicitly change from one uh, one data type into the other another type of data type is boolean data types it has it takes in two boolean values one is true and one is false now um, let us say we have check equals to true and check f uh, now we this is how we define literals so that's boolean literal we are essentially if i type in we request the type of check we have a class of bool or boolean now in python um any boolean so two boolean values uh, or boolean types are stored as true is stored stored as one and false is stored as zero um so that becomes quite interesting actually uh, when we we can operate on them like we do for integers now before we do that we can also use conditional or logical operators and store variables so check rate. we are checking if a value is greater than other so 20 greater than 15 so if i try if i try to check greater so this will output true because this logical operator outputs as yes or true now one thing that is quite um, interesting that i was talking about was if we can add two booleans and it will show if it's a true plus true that will show us a uh, it outputs as one plus one that is true so this is one and this is one so that's true and if I use true plus false, should if I use is uh, so one plus zero is one. again. Um, 
you can also subtract by subtract that gives us zero. so you can do another one and so that gives you minus 19 so 1 minus minus 19 so that's quite cool right so this is a small part of like one of the data types which is quite uh, useful in conditional operate conditional statements using logical operators and all those things. so you can add you can use conditional operators here so that's what bool or boolean data type is all about so till now we have been talking about the we have been talking about the singular data types which are numeric data types but actually we touched upon a little bit of string data types but let's say we have a group of elements or items or numbers or a combination of integers floating points uh, strings complex numbers so be it now for those to store them inside a particular variable uh, we use something called a uh, sequences and those are uh, called sequence data types or sequences in python so one of the first sequences that we touched upon a little bit just about uh, before was string now string data types are easy to uh, so literals string literals we can use string literals to define so let's say string uh, one equals to, this is this is my um you can also write the same thing using double quotes double quotes uh, so this becomes uh, both are the same thing now if i print type str1 and it should show the class as str um, for multi-line you would like to use str multi call that variable that and for multi line just to save time so this becomes a multi line so for multi line this becomes my multi line uh, string now also you can do the this thing as triple double quotes so that's perfectly now one of the interesting parts of strings are uh, or sequences rather is the comprehension part or slicing and all those things now for that uh, we need to understand how python stores um, how python indexes a sequence python indexes a sequence from starts from zero so if you have a let's say um okay so i have a 18 the length of my string so this is the length method or length we can call it on sequences and you see that my length is uh, so the strings length is 18 and so what it does is it would use uh, indexing and so for the first element the index would be 
str1 of 0 this would show or output this would show or output the capital T now you can also uh, let me copy this uh, now let me uh, use something called a comprehension now you can do this is one way of so it will print out the whole thing because there is no second value now if I can if I do this it will only print out the first element now why because uh, Python ignores the so it excludes the range so this is from 0 to 1 but excluding the final number so that would be only 0 right now if I do 3 so this will be 0 0 element first element and the second element but not the third or in case the fourth if you count 1 2 3 4 but if you count as python does or index as python does it will be 0 1 2 and 3 so third is s but it will exclude the third um, character now this becomes quite um, interesting when it, you want to slice strings or you want just part of the string now where it, it uh, essentially gets his use cases um, let's say you uh, if you have done web scraping or something like that you would be using uh, string slices you can use other things like regular expressions and all those things those are uh, a separate topic of discussion but uh, you can essentially do all of those things if you know what you want to slice of, or if you have seen the string beforehand you can use string comprehensions to slice mm. or else you would be using regular expressions on that so uh, you, if you want to uh, only get this word t-h-i-s so if you, you would be searching for the first um, space now another interesting part is if i write string one uh, every minus indexing negative index so it ignores the first or the first from the last or the last uh, alphabet because it's the index right so if i do two it ignores the it doesn't read the last two now this is called a negative indexing and it is also used quite a lot in python negative indexing like if you do if you add one so it takes in so it ignores the first so zero zero index it takes in from the one and goes up till the sec third last so it knows the last two so you can use positive and negative index within uh, one part so that's quite interesting right uh, for operating on strings uh, if you don't know how much so this becomes handy when you don't know what what length your string is now if you don't know what your length is what the string length is you can use negative indexing there um, uh, you can also use something uh, operators actually you can concatenate or add two strings like string uh, let's say Let us, this. Um, let us say I want to write this is my channel deep code vision 
so i would be using you can use this so string of one string of two and if i run i need to run the whole so this becomes this is my channel deep code vision now there is no space so you can add a string if you add if you add anything else like integer it won't work it won't work now you need to add a string now how you add a string is within a double quote or a single quote so you are using a string literal here now if i add this it works uh, you can also let's say uh, you can multiple so you can repeat one string let's say i want to repeat this but for um four number of times so it concatenates or adds adds up to a string and then it so this is my channel deep code vision this is my channel deep code vision but you can so you can do this you can add another space i print now so this is so this works right you can also add a dot inside so that it's correct grammatically so oh okay so another thing uh, how do we know so how does this work okay so let's say i want to um, add an integer to my um, one of the characters uh, in the in a particular string for that what we need to do is we need to convert the character let's say string str1 with the index of 0 let's say this this or i can take so this is i would want to i would like to add one to that so this will throw an error what error uh, can only concatenate str to str so if i write one with this it will work but i want to add an integer to it and what i can do is i can call an odd order so this converts this particular um, character so each string is made up of characters so this converts the particular character into uh, integer and then it adds one to it so order of str3 which is or the ascii value which is 0 1 2 3 so s has an ascii value of 115 and it adds one to it now um so that's how you convert uh, an integer to sorry a string to or string character character of a string you cannot convert the whole string uh, as as using this you need to use a loop and do all sorts of so that's a nice um tidbit if you like um so that's about it actually for this video uh, um the rest all sequences like bytes byte array tuple uh, list range and sets maps we will talk about it in uh, the next part of the data types in python because it, it's quite long video as it is right now so stay tuned for the next uh, part of this video and also check out my other videos um, on python if you are interested i do coding uh, code along stuff as well um, 
and if you like my video do share with share it with others it's completely free it doesn't cost you anything and if you like and also do comment uh, what other methods you use on strings um, is there any other methods you would like to use or is there other uh, function or anything if you want you can comment down below and subscribe to my channel it's it will give you notifications whenever the next uh, data type video drops um okay um so thank you and hopefully you will be tuning in back for the next one cheers